Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, as you can see, we're back with the VIC-20. It's been a while since uh, I did anything with the VIC-20. Um, there are a couple of things. i got some spare chips here um, of different types. Um, there's a 656 one there that was sent as a, a replacement for one of the ones that were faulty when I ordered some of the ones from AliExpress. It's interesting, actually. Um, I don't think they're testing them there. They perhaps haven't got the capability. Um, but, uh, you know, they've got large stocks of these. Um, and I think I must have ordered about 10, and out of 10, three of them were faulty. So, you know, you've got like a 30% failure rate with those, uh, you know, uh, you know, dead on arrival kind of thing, with various different types of faults. Still got the old ones, I might have a look at them at some point just to try and work out what's wrong with them. But um, I thought I'd mention that anyway, if you're going to order, uh, you know, a VIC 6561 from AliExpress, just bear in mind that you're probably going to get about 30% failure rate, with the failure rate, you know, dead on arrival. Um, also got some of these uh, six R, uh, Rockwell R6502 APs, I've got three of those. Um, I just wanted to test these, um, I want to test them in a few different places, I'm going to test them in the VIC, you'll probably have seen in the other video, I'm going to test one of these in the um, 1541 disk drive as well, in that Alps model. Um, I've also got the old uh, CPU here out of the last 60, uh, 1541 that I looked at, um, I forget what it was now. It was, was it another 1541C? I can't remember. I think it was. I think it wasn't. Oh, no, it wasn't actually. It wasn't the 1541C. It was the, the other one, not the C model and not the Alps model. That had this faulty CPU. Um, now, the interesting thing is, I might put a mark on this to remind me that it's you know, a hot, you know, there's a hot problem, heat problem. It wasn't with the chip itself. It was only when you actually cooled down this, the wire that was next to it that it started working. Um, which made you think it was the via, but if you watch that video, uh, you know I did very clearly, you know, specifically avoid to any, you know, cooling the CPU. It was only when I killed the via that the problem um, resolved itself. Um, but having swapped out the CPU, the problem went away completely. Put it back in, same problem back. So definitely something with this CPU. I just don't understand how um, cooling the via that was nearby solved the problem. Um, Maybe one of the uh, pins, the address pins or the data pins is, was overloading that via in some way, I don't know, and that was the problem. As soon as you cooled the via down, then it was okay. So, I don't know, I might need to get the scope onto that to have a look, see if we can work out you know, what's causing the problem. But I'd be interested to try this, um, as I said I would do, in the VIC, to see um, what, you know, what happens. Um, now, this has all sort of coincided, actually, with a bit of good luck. Um, Dave Curran from Time Mail Software has sent me this which is um, the VIC-20, um, you know, PAL VIC-20 Diagnostics car. So it's a nice little board here that he's uh, created himself. Um, it's pretty sweet, it's got a reset button and everything, so we'll just plug that in the back of the uh, VIC there. But he's also been kind enough to send me the... Uh, oh, I'm dropping out of the way here, because I did open this earlier. And I've had a tinker, so have a quick look. I've not tried it yet, but uh, as you can see, we've got the uh, loopbacks here as well. So you have one of these for the tape ports, one for the joystick ports, um, and then you've got this... This one here comprises of three parts, so it goes to your, your user port, I think, or whatever it's called on the back. Um, and then that probably goes into the uh, serial, you know, the, uh, yeah, serial. Um, and then this piece here goes, is a keyboard header, you know, you unplug your keyboard and uh, you can see there's a gap there on this side. And that just goes, you know, straight onto your keyboard um, position. Um, what I like about this as well is just small touches with things that Dave does. I, I, I like the way he's put holes in here and use this as a strain relief. So, you know, you're not just, because you imagine if you just solder straight on there, you know, straight to the solder point from the wire, it's, you know, just after a few twists and turns, it'll be coming off. So that is really nice, um, you know, well thought out. It's done the same on that side there, you can see a little mini strain relief. It goes through a hole, back through another hole, and then soldered on. That's quite neat. Um, so I'm going to take the lid off the Vic now. Um, and I think we'll try that old faulty CPU first, just because I'm, I'm curious to see how it behaves in this system. So I've surprised myself here, it's been a while since I used this particular VIG. Um, but when I, you know, I've used it a fair bit, um, and I'd forgotten I left the uh, Rockwell CPU in there. And I also left that uh, Rockwell 6522 AP with the diode on there to deal with the non-maskable interrupt uh, IRQ issue that I was getting. Um, so, um, yeah, clearly, you know, it does work with 6502s. I think, I thought I'd done this, I wasn't sure. But we'll take that out now, and I'm going to put this, uh, the one out of that disk drive in. Um, and we'll just see, see if it works or not. Okay, well, it's in there, um, and it's powered straight up, which is a good sign. Uh, you can tell from the yellow blob there, and hopefully you might be able to see the writing on it. But, uh, yeah, so first signs are that's working okay. But this is how it behaved in the disk drive anyway. It was, it was a bit hit and miss.
So it is quite warm in here today. Um, I'm just using that other CPU, the, the one that was in the disk drive there that had a fault. Um, so I can get this in the right position on there to get the maximum temperature saying. Look at that, 49 degrees. Yeah, it's sort of 48, 49 degrees, roughly. If you put your finger on it, your finger starts to burn up, actually. That's quite painful. Um, yeah, I think the hottest is about 49, I've had on there. But we'll just get the Rockwell on there now um, and run the same game. I just wanted to show you the difference in temperature. The Via as well, actually. This Via is pretty hot. You know, you keep your hand on it for 10 seconds or so. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely boiling. Um, this will probably not indicate very well. It's probably going to be around the 40 degrees mark. Uh, let's just move it around a bit. Yeah, 42 there. So it's not. I don't believe it. I don't believe it's 42. Could be the batteries are a bit low in this, I'm not sure. But um, I do know that if I get the Rockwell in there now, it barely breaks even lukewarm. It's almost like it's not even running. It's that cold. So I think I'll swap that back over. I don't want to leave that one running in there. So here we go. Same game loaded. Uh, let's do the temperature check on this. And it's been running for a few minutes this now. It took a while to load actually. It's around 40 degrees, so it's like there's about 10 degree difference. Um, and I don't think this thing is picking it up very well because on that other one, I put my hand on it like that and I can't tolerate the temperature, it's too hot. But this one, it's just warm. So, um, yeah, there's a definite uh, difference. I would suspect actually that when I measured 49 before, it's way higher, way higher than 49. I think you'd have to have the uh, user proper thermometer, not one of these cheap ones. It's just, it's, you've, also, you've got to get it almost pinpoint accurate on the, this spot that was red hot. Um, this one, it's significantly colder, I would say it's 50% as warm at least as the other one. And the other thing I'm going to do is put my heat sunk uh, Vic back in there as well. I've been using the replacement that came from uh, AliExpress there and that one's been working fine. So I've not given it a, th a particularly thorough test but it, I've tested various games with it. I've run some of the diagnostic stuff on it and it's been run for about 20 or 30 minutes here now. And it's been okay, the sound's good out of it, colours are okay. So I think I'll call that one um, you know, okay and just stick it in my spares. So I've not bored you with it but I've also just worked my way through the three. Um, these 6502s I got as well, uh, R6502AP I think they are, um, but yeah as you can see they're all working, they're all working fine. That's the third uh, Rockwell 6502 I'm just testing. Um, I've been using this SID player here just because it's pretty intensive for use of the CPU probably as it feeds data or spoon feeds it to the VIC there. Um, but yeah it's, uh, it's working well, I think they're all good those chips. Um, it's rare actually to get faulty uh, R6502APs from eBay, they tend to be pretty good actually. It's just the VIC chips from AliExpress that are a bit hit and miss. It's the same with the Vias, the Vias are pretty good as, as well actually, the Rockwell Vias. So I've got all the diagnostics harnesses connected here, I don't you can see you get one for the joystick um, and the, the loop backs, you know, so it's almost like one pin connects to another pin, etc. In order that when it, you know, you can test the I.O. there, you can test, the, you know, you can feed output on one pin and then check on another input pin and say, yeah, we're getting the signal that we're sending on the output pin, if that makes sense. And you get the same sort of thing going on in all the interface components here, you know, your keyboard, um, the uh, expansion port, uh, whatever it is, the user port, I think it's called, and your data set port and your uh, serial um, port here as well. So that's well, that's why it's useful to have these. And in fact, in the case of the VIC-20 diagnostics, it won't run, you know, it'll stop an error on the first error it comes across. It won't continue, whereas the C64 diagnostics cards, you can actually run those without the loopbacks. Um, I'm not sure whether some of these loopbacks may well um, be used with uh, C64, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll leave that open to Dave um, to comment below or anybody else who might know. Um, I suspect they will. I think the data, the data set certainly, the serial, maybe even the keyboard, I, I think all of them. It's just the expansion port. I'm just not sure whether anything's mapped slightly differently on the VIC, but certainly um, things like the keyboard, the serial, data set, the joystick, yeah, I'm just not sure about the expansion. Um, and it, it, you've got to get these the right way up. Um, you know, the, 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 the logo and stuff on the boards is face up, as you can see, you know, the text, the silk screen there. Um, and the, the, the keyboard um, part here, you can only get it one way because there's a pin missing. You know, in the connector there, there's a pin missing just near the end. I think it's like pin one or something down here. Um, so you can only get it one way. Um, yeah, I don't think, yeah, I don't think you get it around the, the wrong way because of the key. You know, the key would stop you doing that. Um, so I'll power this up now and we'll have a look at it. So the way it works here, it tests various things like the zero page, stat page and CPU, RAM, um, all sorts there, you know, you can see the cassette port, timers, 
I'm not sure what those two edges are, negative and positive edge of CB1 and CB2, whatever those were. Um, but yeah, you get the colour bars and things there. There is a sound test, we've got the volume disconnected at the moment on this actually. Um, and it will just loop round, it'll tell you the cycle count, you've got the time, you know, how long it's been running, how many days. So it's really good for, you know, burning tests and things like that. Um, but uh, it has its own ROM and RAM. I think this, it's got its own RAM. I'll show you the board again in a minute close up. Looks like it's got its own RAM on the board as well. Um, so I'm guessing this might work as a dead test. I'm not sure. It depends on the system, on what's exactly dead in your system. If your CPU is dead, you, you know, you, 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 it's game over kind of thing. Um, and it's a similar thing with the VIC. I guess if you've got no output on the VIC, um, you might be able to hear the sound stuff when it comes to the sound test bit. So just a quick look at the car here now and the uh, boards and things that come with it. As you can see, it's, uh, you've got a reset button there, you've got your ROM. And I think this is a RAM. Um, yeah, please post in the comments, Dave. I've not looked up the part number, it's one of these Cypress ones, is it? CY7C something, I don't know, I can't read it, it's quite small. But I think that's a RAM, uh, an SRAM. Um, so yeah, you can see it's nice and tidy, nice and clean board there. Um, and then you also, which part to the side, you also obviously get these dongles and things and they've got the nice uh, silk screen printed on there and uh, these cable reliefs as I showed earlier. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.